All right, let's move on to college basketball, Mikey. Let's roll on. Uh, college basketball, our experts are doing a hell of a job for us right now. All of them across the board. Let's roll. We have Morgan Spooner giving us Toledo first half minus four as his favorite college play of the day. Let me just make sure I get over to NCAA basketball and I'm ready to rock for this. I apologize. I probably should have done this a second ago. Here we go. We are good to go. Uh, why don't, while I'm just setting this up, how did uh, last night's college basketball go for you, Mikey? Uh, it went very well. Um, what just happened to my, uh, what just happened to my screen here? Streamer oh. just kind of zipped me out of this thing here. And okay. uh, let me, uh, let me jump out and come back in. Sorry, Jimmy. No problem. Please do. No problem. All right. Let's set up the first spot on the board for our Mikey money. Let's start with the first scene on the first game on the board. Incarnate Ward and Rice has popped off here. But Mikey gets his card started here. Sorry, let me go over to my notes. Uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, we are not – usually we go chronologically. We're not going chronologically here today. Uh, Mikey, you good to go? Let us know when you want to – yeah, you're good to go. Okay, we'll get you back in here. Uh, so we're not doing that just because I wanted to set it up where the games that Mikey has on his own will open with. Then we'll have Connor Mack and Mike together, and then C Mac will finish with games that Mike hasn't spoken about. So we start at 8 p.m. Eastern. Chicago State Cougars three and nine, one and three on the road at the number 25 ranked Northwestern Wildcats seven and one six zero at home at Welsh Ryan Arena in Evanston, Illinois. As soon as I saw you pick this game. I immediately liked it. Uh, you know, <laughs> we we saw uh, LSU play uh, Southeast Louisiana. It's similar type of situation as this game. The question, th does LSU care that much? Because we know that Southeast Louisiana did, and they covered. They covered comfortably, and we're covering all game long. Is this a similar situation because this means something to the Cougars, and it doesn't really mean that much to Northwestern? Northwestern on a three-game winning streak, uh, they just beat up on Detroit Mercy 9159 at home and they're 6 and 0 oh at home. Going up against Chicago State, uh, they just lost to the St. Thomas Minnesota Tommies uh, in pretty ugly fashion, 27.8% from 3. You know, this is not a very skilled basketball team, but I kind of see an angle here and I'm not sure if that's where you're going. So let's set up the line history here for us. We have Northwestern right now over at pinnacle as 25 point favorites they open up at 24 and a half uh they get up to 25 but the the initial move opening 24 and a half was down to 24 it's kind of bounced all over the place and found a home at 25 and it's very slightly juiced towards the cougars uh, let's go into the total here for this one we have two games for mikey before c mac joins and then we'll have the three of us rolling from a total scenario here we have it oh god sorry it's just not refreshing i'll just do this quickly here sorry about that and here we go from a total scenario here we are sitting at 134 we see other books at 133 this is another spot where it's kind of been all over the map opened up at 134 quickly dropped down to 132 and a half this opened up at 813 this morning and then it started climbing uh, so it bounced all over the place uh, i guess the market just unsure uh, at this point and when we get to the cash flow for this one okay, here we go we're looking at cash we have 55 percent of the tickets and 78 percent of the cash on northwestern and from a total scenario you have 40 percent of the tickets and 53 percent of cash on the under take it away for us here mikey game one on your card cougars wildcats battle of illinois I love the points in this one here they're like 24 and a half i mean i know they're a three and 19 with chicago state but you know, this isn't the Chicago State of a couple of years ago where they were just auto fades. The, the program's starting to move forward. They're finding a way to get, you know, uh, offensive production, albeit, you know, they're not they're not uh, out there slaying monster dragons, but they're out there putting points in the net, and that's how you're going to win games here, or at least cover. You know, we know Northwestern's a juggernaut, no question about it. The thing about Big Ten teams, though, is look at what they do when they come and they play an unranked opponent going after that. They're winning less than 40% of the time, or covering the spread less than 40% of the time. Big win against Detroit Mercy, no question about it. Uh, Four-point outright victory against Purdue. That was a big one. That was an overtime opportunity. So they backed up an overtime opportunity with a blowout win against an inferior opponent. But 
Um, you know, on the flip side of things, you look at Chicago State, uh, that Stetson win, that was a pretty big output there. That's a big offense in Stetson. They held those boys to 54 points. And, uh, you know, then then they come back out there. They're, not, they're just not afraid to – they're battle – or they're not necessarily battle-tested, but they're not afraid to go out there and uh, and put points on the board. They're a top 100 three-point, um, you know, defensive team as well. So they're not afraid to go out there and get in their faces. Now, Northwestern, you know, 41st overall in Kempom rankings as well. So um, clearly have to respect their capability. I just don't know how they get up and get ready for this game. It's just a tough spot for me when I look at this thing and thinking – Northwestern likes to protect the ball. They're, they're not clumsy and careless when it comes to some of those opportunities. But Chicago State's got a top 20 turnover defense out there. So, um, you know, I think that makes the difference in this game when it comes down to the fact that Chicago State can throw the three. Um, you know, they're able to go out there and albeit they're not going to go and get a ton of blocks against Northwestern. I think they're going to get just enough to sneak through this 24 and a half. I think it's moved too far. Chicago State ranks 44th in free throw points as well. Um, we know Northwestern's willing to go out there and take fouls, and Chicago State's good at drawing fouls. So we got a team that shoots well from the free throw line. That's going to help chip away at that gap. We got a team that can handle turnovers on the defensive side of the ball. That should help minimize some of those fast break opportunities that Northwestern gets. I'm going to take 24 and a half points. Give me Chicago State. I can give you 25. Chicago Perfect. State at minus 110. I find this uh, again. The biases now keep repeating them. You know, I wanted Southeast Louisiana. I wanted them, and I didn't move on. And I don't remember why I didn't, but it worked out exactly the way I expected it to. And this is so similar. And now the spread's bigger. Yeah. And, you know, Southeast Louisiana is better than the Cougars. But uh, I like this, and I'd like to join you on it. Let's move on to the next spot on the – oh, sorry, we have two – more spots on the board. My bad. Two more spots on the board. Next up, 9 p.m. Eastern. We have the Jack Jones Classic. Londo's already given us his best bet in college basketball. It is Creighton minus 12 and a half. Creighton Blue Jays at the UNLV Rebels. We're at the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson for the Jack Jones Classic. Uh, Brent Cook giving us a final score where Chicago State does not cover. Uh, we will see if that comes to uh, we'll fruition. See. And Joseph Thompson in the house. You know, I'll copy and paste both of these spots. Uh, Joseph Thompson giving us his best spot, and that is Mississippi McNeese State over 139 and a half. Thank you for sharing that with us, Joe T. And well, I will also – hot, man. Joe T puts those plays out there, and uh, I see him on the regular, and he's cashing at a big rate. So give our guy Joe T some looks. He's a huge addition to our squad. I agree completely. He, he We started, he, you know, I, I guess he was introduced to us sort of by winning the poker tournament that we had months ago. Oh, by oh. the way, I had, I'm in contact now. We're, we're – I, I expect to have our December 29th poker tournament up to start signing up on Friday so we can have a long time to sign up. And there's going to be revised. It's going to be everything we talked about in the first poker tournament. And this is like, I'm telling you, this is our last hurrah, man. Uh, we're not getting enough people into it. And we, uh, I, I need us to be involved in this. It's the Friday, December 29th. I think it's a perfect time for us, uh, you know, just after the holidays sort of thing for us to, you know, have some drinks and play poker. So, that will be up here shortly. Uh, let's set this up here for Mikey. We have this game popping off at 9 p.m. Eastern. Right now, Creighton minus 12 and a half, minus 13 at a bunch of books. But there's been a move to the running Rebels. They opened up at 14 and a half, and they're now at 12 and a half. So we have a move to the running Rebels. And we've just seen that Justin McElvey has UNLV on his card. From a total scenario, we have a 151. This opened up at 149, and it got up to 152 and a half. So we've had buyback. It dropped to 150, but now it's at 151. But So we have had a two-point move to the over and a two-point move to the running Rebels. Let's take a look at the cash flow. 37% of the tickets, 33% of the cash on UNLV, and we've had a two-point move towards them. Very interesting. 28% of the tickets and 67% of the cash on the under. And we've seen U-shaped movement sort of on that one. Take it away for us here. Mikey, Jack Jones Classic, Blue Jays, Rebels. Yeah, uh, you got to go crate in this thing. I, I don't understand this line movement to UNLV. UNLV, I mean, if you want to look at the simplistic side of this thing, UNLV is 2-5 and five against the spread. Uh, Creighton 7-2 and two against the spread. So uh, Creighton has been crushing everybody. They had that one blip on the radar against Colorado State. They only put up 48 points. That moved Colorado State into a top 25 spot out there. And, uh, you know, I, I, I faded Colorado State that next game, uh, took Colorado with the three and a half points, the battle of Colorado, figuring, well, they're now a top 25 ranked team and they're not going to be able to hang on. No, 
they're they're kind of the real deal. So that was a good test for Creighton. Um, and they got slapped in the mouth and they've rebounded, crushing everybody ever since. You know, laying 31 points covering the spread, laying four points against Nebraska, a tough Nebraska team in Cornhusker region, laying four points, they get the job done. They're down there, they're laying eight points against Oklahoma State, they get the job done. You know, Colorado State, um, you know, tough spot for them there. We talked about that eight and a half point favorites and they got slapped in the mouth. So difficult spot for them in that situation. But what have they done since then? They've improved. They're shooting 51% from the floor. They're over 40% from three points and they're rebounding. So they're kind of playing a complete game after taking that little sting and and uh, kind of learning from that lesson early. It was a good time to take that lesson. Flip side of things, you look at UNLV, just lost to Loyola Marymount, right? 78-75. They did beat Akron 72-70, but they were laying three and a half points. They didn't cover the spread. They lost to Richmond. They lost to Florida State. Um, You know, they covered against Pepperdine. Woohoo, good for you. But uh, at the end of the day, for me, I'm going to take these boots. I'm going to run these guys right into the ground here. I think there's going to be few opportunities this season where we get the opportunity to jump on a team and just continue to cash. I think Creighton's in that position. We're already seven and two with them, and uh, I don't think they look back at least for the near future. So an eight and one Creighton team on the road against the UNLV Rebels. I'm going to lay that thirteen and a half. I guess I see twelve and a half points now. Twelve and a half. And no, this was not the first game after the shooting. The first game after the shooting was against Loyola Marymount, and they did not. They were two and a half point favorites, and they lost seventy eight seventy five. So it's a very very important question. Uh, that Jake asked, yeah, extremely important, and it's not. And and you know, death is always a real tricky thing to cap, man. And but it's not the first game after the shooting. All right, let's lock in Creighton for you. We have a twelve and a half right here at Pinnacle. Here we go. Uh, minus twelve and a half, minus one thirteen. Can we get a minus one ten? Do you have a minus one ten? Uh, I see minus 115. Okay, so we'll give you the minus uh, 12 and a half and minus 113. Locked in for Mikey Creighton. Minus 12 and a half, minus 113. All right, we move on to the final spot before we are joined by Connor Mack. 10 p.m. Eastern, Weber State Wildcats, 5 and 3, 1 and 1 on the road at the Nevada Wolfpack, 7 and 1, 6 and 0 at home. We are at the Lawler Event Center in Reno, Nevada. Uh, let's take a look here, pull this up, and set this up. Sorry, uh, give me a second. And here we go. From a spread perspective, we have Nevada as nine-point favorites. Nine-point favorites are minus 108. They opened up at 10. There's been a one-point drop to nine, so a one-point move towards Weaver State. From a total perspective, we are sitting here with a 135.5. and a half. This opened up at 133 and a half, and it dropped to 132 and a half before this big climb towards the over. Uh, let's take a look at this cash flow here. I move down to the bottom and above Incarnate Ward, and we have 66% of the tickets and 83% of the cash on Weaver State. Public road dog, but the lines moved a point in their direction, and we're only talking about 1,655 tickets at this point. So a one-point move towards Weaver State. From the total scenario, 33% of tickets and 77% of cash on the under. And yet, you know, we've climbed. So quick look at the rest situation for both squads here. The Wildcats uh, coming off of – oh, they each played. So they each played – I guess that would be what? Saturday. They each played on Saturday. Uh, Weber State coming off a very comfortable 28-point win at home over Cal Poly as 12.5-point favorites. And the Wolfpack having their winning streak snapped at home to Drake, 72-53. It was a legit uh, winning streak. And they lose by 19 at home. And I don't have the spread here. 37.3% from the field, 24% from three, 19 turnovers. They looked awful. Drake came in at eight and one. And this was Nevada's first loss of the season. Nevada scores 19 points in the first half and no shows in this basketball game. Take it away for us here. The floor is yours, Weaver State, Nevada Wolfpack. 
love me an opportunity for a team that I think is definitely a, uh, a, a clearly going to be a, a tournament team, but I think they make a run elite eight or better spot for Nevada this year. And give me them off this loss. Are you kidding right now? They kind of just, they, they kind of got exposed, right? 72 53 to Drake. You talked about that on the flip side. You look at Weber Weber plays Cal Poly. It's a three and seven Cal Poly team. So let's not go anointing them conference champions just yet here. Uh, not a great spot when it comes to Weber and who they're going to go out there. They're going to have to do some work within their conference to be able to get to anything even close to sniffing the tournament. Uh, what I think about this game is it's the styles make fights kind of mantra. You got a team in Nevada. They grind you out. They want to go out there. They'll, they'll run a pace on the court, but they like to draw fouls. They rebound the game. They do kind of everything um, better than most is probably the best way to describe it. And then on the flip side of things, you look at Weber, they're a slow paced team and they don't score very well. So they need to make the most of every opportunity. And that's why they're slow paced. They're 300 or worse in every shooting category in college basketball this season here. They're going to have to come out there and get this thing done early with a bad shooting team that likes to grind. That tells me you're not getting a lot of chances and it becomes like quicksand. If you don't get those chances, those misses start to compound each other. So you miss one. Now you're down two when the team runs it back the other way. You miss another one. Now you're down four. You miss another, and you get a, a frustration foul. Now you're down seven or eight points, and it just builds up quickly. Also, home favorites, uh, home teams, when they're lined between nine to ten and a half points, uh, are 46 and 34 in the cover on those spots. And uh, I think it's just a great opportunity for Nevada to bounce back. They're the better team all around in this thing. And uh, the number doesn't make sense to me. You want to keep moving it from nines to eights and whatevers. It's not the Weber team that everybody remembers from years past. I'll grant it. They, they are kind of finding a way to fight, but they're a five and three team that beats up on bottom feeders. And you got a team in Nevada that's at home, ready to bounce back. Clearly the better team should be motivated to come out here and punch these boys in the mouth. I think it's going to be just that. And uh, I expect it to be a 16 to 18 point victory for Nevada. So uh, we're laying them points. We're going to go take them Wolfpack. What's wrong with the Wolfpack? Nothing. Seven and one Wolfpack going to get the job done tonight. Let's lock that in for you. We can get you a minus nine at minus 108. Very interesting market move. Uh, you know, my first thing that jumps out at me is how horrible they played in the first half to get that started. Uh and, and my bad, that, that was not that game was not at the Lawler Events Center Arena. Do you think that they bounce back here early? You know, I, I don't have a ton of success when it comes. I, I like the longevity of the games. I know a lot of you guys are really successful trying to find those get in and get out spots. And, um, you know, like, um, I, I, I'm just I'm just not. I just don't find a way to get it done. Like, I know we talked a little bit yesterday about this Duke game, and I know some guys were on the other side of Duke in the first half. And I was like, I want the full game because I think the game, the team pulls away in the second half. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. The other side covered the first half, the dog, and then the full game gets it done. I, I think if you're Nevada here, the mental state of your team has got to be, we got to get up for this thing right off the gate. They should be fired mm -hmm. up to go. They're at home, so the travel factors aren't applicable here. It's just a matter of saying, let's lace our high tops up. Let's go out there. Let's get a good shoot around, and then let's go out there and smack this team. So I do think it's going to be a start-to-finish spot, but I, I just want the full game. I mean, it's five and a half, fives out there for the first halves. Um, you know, on a nine for the game, what that does tell me is Nevada should be up comfortably in the first half. And then the back door starts to open up for Weber. We know they probably prefer the back door anyways, those guys. So, uh, I'm going to go with Nevada Wolfpack and, and, and take that full game, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him win that first half too. I'm just going to get first half better. I am going to move on that first half. I just, the situation of how horrible they looked against yeah. Drake early, uh, it just plays into my hands there. And, and, and because then, Weber wants to run a slow pace, you can't. You can't afford – you have to come out there and dictate pace to put them on their heels if you're going to win this game. So they can't afford to let Weber come out there and just start kind of flapping it around a little bit, in my opinion. Then the Chicago State spot I like as well quite a bit. I think I'm going to roll with you on those two spots. I'll keep looking at the other ones. Shout out to Stimmy OG. He's big on the over in the Auburn game. When Stimmy drops these things, listen. Like I, this guy catches at a very high rate. So he's looking at the over in the Auburn game. And then there was a tragedy in Nasty Nate's family. Oh. You know, uh, just a horrific situation. I guess the victim was not that close with everyone, but I'm really sorry to hear that, Nasty Nate. And uh, life is a uh, pretty scary man, so just focus on the sports is what I can uh, 
to get through everything. That's how I get through everything. But sorry to hear, Nate. We're thinking about you and your family, man, and sending love to the nasty Nate family. And Nate is such a magic guy at Palooza. Like, uh, one of the gags is that Jose tries to offer him water, and Nate will slap it out of Jose's hand all over Jose <laughs> and all over the uh, floor of the bar. Always gets a big laugh from us. <laughs> okay, let's bring on our next guest. Uh, this is the best of both worlds, man. We have our cappers on the same game for two games. So please welcome the star of Hitting the Books, which is out right now. All of the bowl games are out right now. Uh, coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. Also the star of our Saturday college basketball live stream. Please welcome. Make it a, make it a, make it a, make it a Mac Daddy, Connor Mac in the house. C-Mac, how are you, my friend? I'm good. You just nailed that. Jimmy, you're getting better, better and better with the Miggity Mac. I love it. Mikey. Mike Jones. What up, C Mac, my guy? What's going on? What up? What up? How are we doing? We're looking to kick some ass and take some names, brother. Let's go. Let's oh, get yeah. right to work. We have two games with both Mikey and C Mac on the same or on the same game. We don't know what their action is going to be. Let's get after it. We go 8 p.m. Eastern for the Arkansas State Red Wolves, 3 and 7, 0 and 5 on the road. The Louisville Cardinals, 4 and 5, 4 and 1 at home. We're at the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. We already heard from Kelly McKinnis. Kelly McKinnis is moving on Louisville in this spot. Uh, Louisville coming off back-to-back -back road losses. Virginia Tech by seven. DePaul, which was a surprise, by seven as well. Uh, Arkansas snapped their three-game losing streak. Uh, you know, they lost to Alabama. That was their third loss. And no shame in that, 89-65. Came back and beat UAB at home, 87-68. Uh, both teams played on Saturday. So that is the situation. Let's start with the line history here for this one. We have had a move since the opening line towards Arkansas State. This opened up with Arkansas State plus five and a half. Uh, this came out yesterday at 3.12 p.m. There was no movement for seven hours. Seven hours, and there's a point and a half move towards Arkansas State. They moved to four. And now there's been an even further one to three and a half. So we have two points of movement towards Arkansas State. From a total side of things here, we are sitting with a 148. It's 148. This opened up at 147. It's now 148. We've had a one-point move, a uh, one-point move towards the over. And when we get into the cash flow for this spot, uh, sorry, give me a second. Here we go. We have 58% of tickets and 79% of the cash on Arkansas State. Then we have 75% of the tickets and 62% of cash on the over. C-Mac joining us. Take it away, Connor. Mac, your first spot on the board, Red Wolves, Cardinals. Shout out to the chat. I got to hit everyone up. Nuke Worker, Ian, Nathan, Top Set, my dude, Justin, Nasty Nate. Uh, shout out to you, my guy. I didn't like to, to hear that news before I came on. Yeah, Monmouth was good. Uh, it was decent three in one night. I wish I put only a half unit, 200 bucks on uh, Oral Roberts, but should have put more on that game. But that's all right. You live and you learn. Let's get to today. Ugly one here. Ugly game. Arkansas State, Louisville. But I going through this card, there's a few spots where it's a little bit different. And we see this when you, you know, you cap college basketball every day. Uh, a little bit different for me than kind of normal days. Arkansas State, not very good. They had a big win against UAB last time out. Well needed. This team's bad defensively, though. 337th. On score defense all year long. One thing, too, they're 0-5 on the road. Defense has been awful. They're pretty average in a bunch of other stats, 66% from the line. They're not very good there. And here's Louisville. We were on Saturday morning. This was a big game to talk about, Jimmy. Mike was the DePaul-Louisville. I stayed off. Some people wanted Louisville, and uh, they lose. Bad in that one. You know, before that, it's been tough for Kenny Payne here <laughs> at Louisville. It has not been good. I thought they play. I saw that some of that Texas game where they lost by one, lost by what eight to Indiana, uh, Virginia Tech by seven. I think they're a little bit better here. I like this has come down to three. Uh, the one thing that it's going to give me, I'm going to get into it in the other games, is this team struggles to score. When you lay points with teams that struggle to score, it, it's not good. This is kind of a, a one maybe one time thing because I love the spot with it. Because Louisville, I talked about Arkansas State, Arkansas State 0 and 5 on the road. Louisville 4 and 1 at home. I think they bounced back in this one. I kind of this was a game that you could maybe look. 
first half. But I talked about the free throws with Arkansas State. Louisville's a little bit better. They're the better defensive team in this game. And I think they cover here. If I get a three, I'll take it. Uh, but if you only have a three and a half, I'll take that as well. Jimmy. I will line shop for you. Uh, Robert Franklin says, you know, he knows they're trash. But come on. Come on, he said. Come on. Let's hear what Mikey M has to say about this spot. Dabby Cab on Louisville minus three and a half and ULL minus two and a half. The top leans at this point, not moved on them. Let's see and let us know if you do, Dabby. And maybe you will after hearing Mikey M's breakdown. Mikey, take it away. Are you rolling with C-Mac or you have a different angle? Yeah, I was holding my breath while he was spinning out because I was like, tell me he's going to go against me on this one here right off the hop. I don't want to be against my guy C-Mac. And in fact, I'm not. I agree with him here. Look, this point spread has come down. I just think enough. You know, is it going to be a, a a four possession type of game? I don't think so. He talked about these teams in the on their and you know specifically Louisville ranks you know three hundred or worse in like every shooting category in college basketball. They're not getting it done, but they defend the home court. He already talked about that there. And um, you know when you look on the other side of things with Arkansas State, yeah, that UAB spot was a big win for them, but three losses prior, they're two and three against the number, so they're not getting it done. But what they do is they take fouls. They, you know, they get chippy, they get gritty. They do like to get some rebound opportunities out there, but they take fouls with that. And Louisville is one of the top 10 teams in the country with their free throw shooting percentage. So that's enough, in my opinion, to get through a three. When you've got a team that's down to a one or a two spot out there um, on their home court, they're a good free throw shooting team. They don't get the nerves. They don't, they don't freak up and freeze out, uh, 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 freeze out and freak out, whatever. But uh, I think it's a good opportunity here to take that. It's a low number. Yeah, to, to, to see Max point a week from now in the same spot, maybe not. But I just think it's a good opportunity for uh, Louisville, four and five, home squad, shooting strong with the free throws. Um, you know, I just think it's a good opportunity for them to come out here. Uh, maybe it's a five-point win. Maybe the number was pegged on. It's a sharp number to begin with. And uh, I think there's an overreaction now to what Arkansas State did to UAB. I had the unfortunate privilege to watch an Arkansas State game the other day, and it was against Bama. And, uh, yeah, they scored 65 points, but that's because Bama was just running and gunning out there. They didn't care. So uh, Bama puts up 89. They're like, go ahead, do your thing uh, on a 25-and-a-half point spread. But that's not the case here. This is a tight number, and uh, when it's a tight number, they tend to lose. So on the road, give me that Louisville spot, minus three. Yes, the three does cost a little bit. Uh, we'll ask c -Mac first. It's minus 116 for the three. Mm. Minus I'll 107 for the three and a half. You'll take the three. What about you, Mikey? Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking right now to make sure it's a good number because uh, unless my page hasn't refreshed, my I don't know what happened with these. We switched to college basketball and everything got a little slower. Uh, Louisville minus three is minus 108 on DraftKings right now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you for finding that. Locked in for both of you guys. Minus three at minus 108. Uh, you know, uh, there's so much – you know, more to life than what we do. We do this because it brings us so much joy. And Nathan Cerna, had, you know, when we're talking about what happened with Nasty Nate, you know, lost his brother in a car accident. And just want to stop the show quickly. And, and I know people in the chat are saying it, but, you know, I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. And then you watch Nathan Cerna. He says, you know, I've noticed the Red Wolves play strong at first and fade fast. And and that is our coping is sports. And I'm so sorry that your family had to go through that, Nathan. And I'm so thankful that we get to cap with you every day. And I see you're doing exactly what we all need to do when we go through tough times is let's go back. Let's come back to sports, come back to sports. But I'm really sorry you had to go through that, Nathan. And uh, we love you, man. Uh, we love you. And uh, it's, you know, there's nothing anyone really can say to make anything feel better going through that. Uh, but just know that we love you and we love capping with you. We have C-Mac and Mikey M both on Louisville Cardinals. Let's move on to the next spot on the board that they're both capping. 10 p.m. Eastern, Seattle, U Red Hawks, 6-3, 0-2 on the road. San Francisco Dawn, 73-4-0 at home. We're at the War Memorial for this one. Uh, let's pull up the situation and the line history. It's good for basketball if these two teams can be good. It's good for basketball if Seattle and San Francisco can be good. Uh, Seattle has been being good this year. Uh, they're coming off a Div 3 situation, but uh, you know they're winning basketball games, but they're winning them at home. Now, they didn't look bad in their last road game. They lost 78-72 to Utah Valley, uh, as, but they were two-and-a-half-point favorites uh, in that loss. 
So it was a great. So they're 0-2 on the road. And then the Dons, uh, 4-0 at home this year, 7-3. and And they're winning pretty comfortably and winning by margin here. This is a good basketball team. And that is also travel-tested. That was an interesting win when they went out to Vandy. We had Dabby Cab give out the Dons as a pick in that one. Let's take a look at the line history here. We will start with the spread for... Make sure I'm on the full game. I am okay. So from a spread situation, we're sitting here with the San Francisco Dons minus nine and a half and minus one ten. They opened up at nine. Uh, they opened up at nine. That was yesterday at three seventeen p.m. So there's been a move towards uh, the. It took two hours, just under two hours for the half point move. So not a major move towards them. And then from a total scenario, we're dealing with a one thirty five. That's where it opened. So we've had almost no change at all on the total. So then let's bring up the cash flow and see if these things uh, correlate here from a cash flow perspective. We have 79% of the tickets and 67% of the cash on San Francisco. They are public. It's moved half point in their direction. Then we have 67% of the tickets and 64% of cash on the over, and we've had no movement whatsoever. Mikey M, we'll start with you on this one. Take it away. This is your final game here on the show. You've done a great, great job, my man. Take it away. Seattle, San Francisco. Yeah, it was fun working all night on this stuff. I see, man, I respect for what you do here when it's uh, 2 in the morning and I'm still going, man, what, what what's next? <laughs> so, uh, you know, appreciate that, man. Shout out to all the work that you put in here. And uh, I think in this case here, you know, uh, this is a spot I'm going to have to go with the uh, the lesser uh, sexy pick and taking the points with a Seattle spot. And at the end of the day, you know, San Francisco gets recognized for the conference they're in. And it's, you know, it's not really because of San Francisco's play with the conference that they're in, right? They go out there and you got a Gonzaga, you got a St. Mary's team, and then you're kind of the third, you know, you're the kind of the third child in the conference. Now, granted, they play well at home, but who do they have coming up on deck? They've got Utah State. They got to pack the bus up and go on out to a nine and one Utah State team that's been playing very tough out there. And when you look at a Seattle team and, and the Red Hawks, they're not necessarily one of those teams that everybody wants to kind of go right out there and bet on, but some big wins for their record this year as well. So, you know, when they go out there and they start playing some teams like Montana state, yeah, you know, they, they lose to, to Northern Arizona, not, not the, not their finest moments. You know, they lost to VCU and Utah Valley as well, but I think there's an opportunity with these points to come out here and get this done. I've had a pretty good beat on San Francisco. I faded them against new Orleans. Uh, I faded them against that Arizona state spot and I played them uh, against Minnesota. So um, for whatever reason, I just feel that Reed is pretty solid with these guys. They have a good defense. Um, you know, they're they're pretty consistent when it comes to holding opponents to 30.9% from the floor. Uh, but Seattle has a pretty proficient offense. They're 45.1% shooting from the floor. Um, you know, Seattle does shoot 38.6% from the, from the floor. They're a 32% three-point shooting team. So they can go out there and put up points. And we've seen that they scored 85 on New Orleans, but they were laying 20 and a half. They didn't get the cover. Uh, they were laying two and a half against Vanderbilt on the road. They did come out there and explode on Vanderbilt. They put up 73, but there's that defense that stepped up and held them to 60. Uh, you know, you lose out to an Arizona State team. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's kind of the one that gets me scratching my head. And then I look back at this team with Seattle and I'm thinking, are they kind of in that Arizona State spot where it's big for them to go to San Francisco? They want to come out there. They want to roll up. Get that big victory in San Francisco. They want to come out there and kind of get that sneak attack to pad their resume. They're going to be ready for this game, and I just think it's a bad scheduling spot for uh, San Francisco to take that road trip to Utah State. So I like that. I think I see tens out there now, and it makes sense because you got an zero and two true road game, zero and two Seattle team. You got a four and zero team in San Francisco at home. They should be double digit favorites, but it's a six and three team versus seven and three team. Bad scheduling spot for me. I'm going to take the points with Seattle. And there are tens. 10 at minus 110 available right now at my bookie. If you want to open up an account at my bookie, we have the link and the bonuses available on our website. My bookie, Bovada, and Bet Online are all there on our website, pubsportsradio.com. C Mac, take it away. Red Hawks, Dons, floor is yours. Yeah, I think this is one uh, I looked at right away. Mike just talked about, I've been on San Francisco two or three times and they've come through for me as well. I had him in that uh, Vandy game, Vandy, rough times yep. for Vandy right now. Seattle here too. I love the guard play. They got two great guards here, Shoemaker, Shoemaker and uh, Cam Tyson. He's really, really good. He's I think he'd probably be the best player on the court. Two great defenses you talked about. Two slow teams that don't shoot it well. They both don't shoot it well from three, uh, 29%. 
was uh, Seattle, 32% uh, was San Francisco. This total is kind of low. I'm not, I didn't want to mess with the total. I, this could get over as low as it is, but in a dog fight like this, I have to have the points. This is one too. I'm just going full game, but as I go forward, I'm going to start looking at dogs and maybe splitting my bet a little bit first half full game. Um, but I'm not here. I think we get the 10 full game. They can hang around in here. Solid defense. Give me the 10, baby. Well, you know, this is exactly what I was hoping for when I put the schedule together. Was I was like, man, it would be nice if both their guys have these, you know, both of our guys have the same action on these two games that they're capping together. Because <laughs> it doesn't happen often. But this uh, really, really worked here. Uh, really worked. So both C Mac and Mikey on the same action here. Louisville, despite the market move towards Arkansas State. And Seattle, despite a very slight market move towards San Francisco, but we know that the public is hammering them here. Uh, I like both looks here. Uh, I will review the rest of Mikey's action after at the end of the show. We have C-Max sticking with us for two more games, and then we have NBA with Dutch Boy Fresh. Uh, spec wow, NFL game in Brazil next season, says Coin. Yeah, oh, they were man. talking about that. Jesus, uh, imagine the robberies, man. <laughs> Ooh, it's going to be a good time. You thought London was bad. <laughs> oh, man. People are going to get ganked. Uh, there we go, Mikey. Great job. You can yeah. catch Mikey this evening. This evening, he's rolling with Last Call, and which is something, something we're so excited about. Last Call is rolling in to our new live stream show every wednesday night all about the hoops with dutch boy fresh and dabby cab we'll talk about that a little more when dab uh, when dutch rolls with us but uh last call rolling into our brand new live stream every wednesday night college basketball nba i know lj from h i'm gonna be rolling with them as well mikey spectacular work my man it was fun capping nhl with you and great job in college football and college basketball and i will be in touch my friend mike mikey any last words for the cappers supporting the show yeah, man, last call, 6 p.m. Eastern. We got LJ tonight. He's going to drop in there and give us his basketball looks as well. So maybe he'll even tell us what it means to ride on slab because you know who the hell is that? It's LJ from the H, baby. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. Looking forward to it. See everybody. C-Mac, always like hanging out with you, man. Good to hear we're on the same spots tonight. Hopefully we can get that cash and make that money. Jimmy the Bag, appreciate the opportunity. Shout out to Jose as well there, hanging down with the ones and the twos. I'll see everybody later on today. There he is, Mikey Money. C-Mac, we roll on. The next spot on Connor Max board, 7 p.m. Eastern. Appalachian State, 7-2, and 0-2 on the road at Queens University. Queens University, Curry Arena, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Queens running real nice here at home. Uh, at home, they've been uh, delivering the goods. Now, uh, some of these home games aren't versus Div 1 competition, but they did beat Gardner-Webb 83-80. Uh, I think the win over Gardner Webb a little more impressive than beating Carolina Christian College 134 69. But Queens 4 0 at home. Uh, going up against App State, the Mountaineers are on a winning streak. Uh, and they also have played, you know, uh, non Div 1 competition last out, but, and they haven't played now for eight days. The Mountaineers have been sitting here for eight days. We last saw them in a big win over Auburn at home, 69-64. This is a basketball team that's rolling pretty nice right now with a big rest advantage. Let's take a look at the line history here. We'll start with the side from a side perspective. We have App State at minus six and a half, minus six and a half. They opened up at minus five and a half. They're now minus six and a half. And then from a total perspective, we, oh, I had it up already. Sorry. We were sitting with a 148. Uh, this opened up at 151 and got up to 152 and a half before a massive drop this morning at 8.43 p.m., a three-point drop, and that wasn't it. Five minutes later, there was another point and a half drop. So we had a four and a half point drop in the total. I wonder if that's player personnel related or just a huge bet. Maybe we'll, C-Mac will have a better idea. And then from a cash flow perspective for this 7 p.m., Start here. We go. We have 38% of the tickets and 55% of the cash on App State. 75% of the tickets, 69% of cash on the over, and yet we saw that massive drop. Take it away for us here, C Mac Mountaineers in action at Queens University. Yeah, with this, uh, I have no injuries. 
in this one. What I think it is is just home game here for Queens. This is a crazy travel for App State. Listen, App State is top defensively. Their numbers are really, really good. And, by the way, this, th- this team's the number one rebounding team in the country as well is App State. Queens isn't that bad, but defensive rebounding, very, very good. You talked about them beating Auburn last time out. This was the game that was the wait for me last night. I was hoping for a five because now I've seen six and a half. Did you even see a few sevens? No, not yet. Okay. You have them at the Vegas Um one? Yeah, I just want to pull it up. I thought I saw a couple. Uh, maybe not. Oh, yeah. It looks yeah. like Bet Online opened this at seven yesterday afternoon at one forty-four. They were they were only seven, and it lasted there for almost six hours before it went to six. And then this I see morning, just the, yeah, carry on. Oh, but then this morning it moved to five at seven in the morning, and since then there's been a bounce back. I know I didn't move on it. Then now I see uh, just the super book has a has a seven right now. There's a lot of six and a halves. And this is the thing, App State. I just think they're a little bit better from the start of the year. Zero and two on the road. That's like keeping me off this Queens five and zero at home. But I think they bully them in this game. I think this is a game App State wins. The problem was laying points on the road. And in the past years, past App State's just not a team you want to lay points. You're not going to last long making money doing that. But I thought if this was low enough in the five, I was going to be on App State just because how good I think their defense and rebounding is. Free throws are all right at 70%. And I think they can hold down Queens. They're not that great of a defense at all. And App State, not a great offense. They're not that great of a shooting team is Queens. They haven't really played anybody. You talk about the win, Gardner-Webb. The other one, about their first game against High Point, they beat them. High Point's played pretty well. But a little bit lower competition. So I would have to see more to pull the trigger. Normally, I'm on the home team dog. Jimmy talked about some of these favorites. But I was looking the other way. I just wanted a five. And it looks like I missed it, like you were talking about this morning. Uh, If I could have got that. If I had a five, I was going to pull the trigger on App State. So in the end, I'm off. Yeah, a very, very interesting spot there. App State, Queens University moved past. And another great thing when you are volume better like a lot of us are is that if the line moves a little too far just put it away there's lots of other spots on the board that we can attack and that's what we are doing here let's move on to the next spot on the board for cmac 10 p.m eastern we have the utah state aggies nine and one one and one on the road at the santa clara broncos uh no nuke uh, queens is now in div one they're, they're new in to, yeah new to div one we wouldn't be talking about a div two a program here where we're only f- focused on the Div 1 spots. Um, uh, we won't be talking about the mighty Lady of the Lake University and others uh, of that ilk. Uh, just Div 1 here. But that's new new to Div 1, Nuki. Uh, Utah State Aggie, Santa Clara Broncos. We're in Santa Clara, California for this one. And two good basketball teams here. Santa Clara coming off the loss, and that loss was part of that Jack Jones classic against New Mexico. So they have back-to-back double-digit losses. Actually, really three, because we're not going to... Who cares what happened against Menlo Park? So three bad losses. They lose to Ohio State by 30, lose to Cal by 15, and then lose to New Mexico by 17. Now, they had beaten Oregon 88-82 at home before this, and they are 5-0 and at home. And the Aggies are playing really good basketball this is a strong utah state basketball team that is nine and one now on the year it's just that loss to bradley in overtime that's it that's the only blemish that they have right now so let's roll into the line history here and set this up for cmac this is a little late night action for us which we all uh, love to have 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific is when it starts using Pinnacle with the line movement. Uh, this opened up with Utah State at minus three and a half. We've had a real legit move towards Santa Clara. This got down to one this morning at 9.30 this morning. It was just a one-point favorite. And now there's been some a little bit of buyback. It's minus one and a half. Now this plus one and a half for Santa Clara here is a juice towards the Broncos, but you can find spots where it's not. So plus one and a half. Let's get into... 
uh, the total here for uh, this one from a total perspective. We are sitting here at 151. This opened up at 151 and a half. It moved to 152 and a half, and it's come back. Uh, but it dropped all the way down to 150. So there's another total where it's kind of, you know, all over the map. And then cash flow for this one, we have 24% of the tickets and 34% of the cash on Utah State, just 24 and 34. Then we have 53% of the tickets and 63% of cash on the over. Take it away for us here, C-Mac, the final game on your college basketball board here for us. Justin McElvey with Santa Clara on his card. What are you doing here, Broncos Aggies? Yeah, this. Uh, let's talk about Santa Clara. Then I had UCLA, where I'm, I kind of were only bad losses Saturday. It was a really good day. I had them plus 10. There was no mash burn for New Mexico. I thought, you got to play this. And they just got stomped on. They are not playing defense right now. One thing he played, he had zero points uh, in this game. Uh, Carlos Marshall, the guy with unbelievable score. Carlos Marshall Jr. for uh, Santa Clara. But he had no points in 21 minutes. He says he's 100%. Now he's feeling good. There's no injuries there. So I think Santa Clara comes to play. I just don't know if they can win this game. <laughs> Me after taking 10 points. And that was, though, on a neutral site, Dollar Loan Center here, you know, right down the street from me, actually right by Green Valley Ranch. Utah State here on the flip side, number one efficient team scoring. They score 84 points a game. This won't be easy for them. I was leaning towards the team total, but I think Santa Clara can score this Utah State team. Their defense is a little bit better, Jimmy, in a, in a few categories. Last year's game, 96-74. I don't know if we get that, but I really think both these teams can get in the 80s. And I thought, I like that this has come down just a tad bit. I just didn't want anything over 152. So if we have a 150, 150 and a half, give me the over. I think both teams score up and down. Uh, at that number, I got to be on this over. I'm going to stay off the side. We have a 150 and a half available at minus 109 okay. at Heritage. Give it to me. C Mac is on the over 150 and a half at minus 109 at Heritage. Utah State Santa Clara for C Mac on the over 150 and a half. He's given us Seattle plus 10. I like that quite a bit. I'm going to roll with you guys on that one. And he's given us Louisville minus three at minus 108. Brent Cook, liking your look on the over in that one. C-Mac, thank you so much for rolling with us. Uh, what's up for you now for the rest of the week here at Pub Sports Radio? I know we have the big Saturday college basketball live stream. Anything else going on? No, just Saturday morning. Check check out Cav and I. Uh, we got to get a game. Yeah, I got to look at the schedule. Yeah, look, we got to look at that. Uh, yeah. But we'll be on Saturday morning. Check it out. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Basketball, too. It's like a nice two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour uh, little thing. Uh, so it was great. We had a great time. Yeah, I think this over is solid. Utah State, I've been on both these teams' overs in spots, and they've been good to me. I was on the Oregon with Santa Clara, one other, and Utah State. Man, they're just really efficient. And I don't see Santa Clara stopping them, really, uh, at all. So, yeah, I love this over. But thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I won't leave. I won't say anything more. I know you got a big NBA card uh, with Dutch, so I'll go. And thanks for having me.